Over the last few months, Darren and I have been talking to farmers all over the country that say, I got to cut costs. I want to cut costs. My banker says I got to cut costs. But here's the problem. What you cut actually could hurt your bottom line, not help it. So the key thing is understanding what you should cut and what you shouldn't cut. The best thing to do in terms of fertility is take a look at a soil test. And when we talk about soil tests, one of the most important things on there is the measure of phosphorus, the amount of phosphorus you have in your soil. But there are different types of phosphorus tests, and it can get a little complicated, so we want to talk through that today. Well, you're exactly right, Brian. For, for many farmers that I've talked to this summer, it's been, you know what, when I get to this fall and I'm putting the fertility out, I'm going to have to look at cutting P and K. Those are just huge expenses on my farm. And I say, well, hold on. They're not expenses, they're investments in your next crop. And when we look at soil test levels, certainly there are some areas of fields and even some whole fields where, you know what, we do have enough phosphorus. We really don't need any for this next crop. Uh, we would be fine making some cuts there. But in other cases, those levels are low enough that if we don't put the phosphorus out there this year, we're gonna suffer in yield. And so it's one of those things where by not spending $10, all of a sudden you're gonna lose $20. In soil pH situations above 7, so if you've got a 7.0 or above, you want to look at the Olson test. That's otherwise known as the bicarbonate P test. And that will tell you available phosphorus. That's, in other words, what's ready to go for your crop right away. Okay, in the lower pH, below 7, then we're going to look at both the Bray P1 and the Bray P2, so weak Bray and strong Bray. With the Bray tests, there's a big difference here. The P1, or weak bray, that's going to tell you what's available right now. The P2, or strong bray, is going to tell you, well, how much is available now, plus some of what's in reserve. So, in other words, if let's say you had 100 for a P2 test, that tells you you've got a lot total in the soil, but you only have 10 for a P1, that tells you not very much of what's in the soil is available. You've got some tie-up issues going on for one reason or another, and then we need to talk through why. So in addition to looking at those tests, we also have to look at how much organic matter do you have in your soil, because with that organic matter, you can basically figure you're going to get four to seven pounds of phosphate out of each percent of organic matter due to organic matter mineralization each year. So that's just something you've got to factor in there in addition to the, either the Olson test or the Bray test when you look at available P. This is why absolutely for this season, we're looking at short term and hey, what's going to be out there and how do we figure out how much more that we have to add but also looking at this organic matter component that Brian just brought up, that's why we're focused on our farm on building organic matter levels over time. So you don't want to make decisions this year that, you know what, we're going to deplete that organic matter and we're going to bring it back down because it takes quite a while to build that back up. The other thing is we don't want to completely deplete our soils of fertility because all of a sudden it takes a while to build the microbial life back up. They need nutrients out there too. So in other words, what Darren is saying is as a general rule, we will tell you first, before you do anything else, before you even look at the soil test, let's talk about how much crop you're going to raise. And look at the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app. You can plug in whatever crop you have, your yield goal, and that will tell you how much phosphorus in total you need, or I should say how much phosphate. So on most soil tests, you will see a phosphorus number. You need to multiply that number times 2.3. So for example, if your phosphorus level showed 10, you multiply that times 2.3, you actually have 23 parts per million on phosphate. So there's a big difference there, and most people are going to talk about, hey, your crop needs X amount of pounds, and they'll just say phosphorus. What they mean is phosphate. So when you look at the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal App, it'll tell you specifically phosphate. This is how much phosphate you need, not how much phosphorus. All right, so if you want to spend less money on phosphorus, you determine, hey, I need some, but how do I do it economically this year? There's a couple of things you can do. Certainly banding is a lot more efficient than broadcasting. Let's just take a 30 inch row, for example, and, and a crop like soybeans that we're standing in. When you've got 30 inch row soybeans, how well are those roots really gonna reach 15 inches out to the side and grab everything out there? Especially if you're in a year where you're challenged for moisture. By putting all that phosphorus closer to the root system, you're able to get more of it in and the tests for years and years have shown our efficiency goes up dramatically moving phosphorus applications closer to the row. So whether you're putting it right in furrow with a real safe liquid product like a pro-germinator for example that we use on our farm, that'd be one way to do it. You can certainly go over in a two by two or even in strip till, you could really use just about any kind of phosphorus program. Maybe you're using MAP or DAP in the fall, you could band that down six or eight inches below the row 
And guess what? Your root system is going to grow right through that next spring and summer and, and grab most of that phosphorus. Okay, so we'll talk more about phosphorus applications on later shows. Today we got to focus here on how do you read that test. So take your number. Again, let's just use for easy figuring. We'll say 10. Okay, let's say it's 10 parts per million. That's phosphorus. You've got to multiply that times 2.3. Now you're up to 23. You've got to multiply that times 2. And the reason why you have to multiply times 2 is we're going to assume you've got a 6 inch soil test. If you had a 12 inch soil test, you'd multiply times 4. Where this comes from is in 6 inches of soil across an acre, that's roughly 2 million pounds. We're talking parts per million. So you've got to multiply your number times 2 if you have a 6 inch test. So 10 times 2.3 is 23. 23 times 2 is 46. So you've got 46 pounds of phosphate that's available right now. And then if you look at your organic matter, let's say again that you've got 5% organic matter, 5 times 4, that's going to give you another 20 pounds right there. So you've got 20 plus 46, you got 66 pounds. So I know we ran through this quickly, but here's the thing. If you need more information on this, you can certainly get in touch with us at agphd.com. Also, we do take live phone calls every day on our radio show. So call us at 844-44-AG-PHD every afternoon and we can certainly talk through this with you. Otherwise, come to an Ag PhD Soils Clinic. They're free, we'll show you how to read a soil test this winter and then you get some hands-on experience with it, but this is stuff you have to know. A lot of people don't know how to read a soil test and so then they either end up overspending on fertilizer or they underspend and they miss great opportunities to make money on the farm. Managing the phosphorus levels on your farm is very important Managing weeds is too. We'll show you how to stop our tough weed of the week coming up later in the show.